real estate scams from the brother and sister team that stole six million dollars in buyer deposits to the buyer who sent a million dollars to the wrong account and then there's my personal experience with a big fat line seller but more important than just scaring you with real estate scam stories we're also going to talk about how to prevent them because well this is one of the biggest investments of your life you don't want to fudge it up Scam number one, the brother and sister team, which part of me is like, oh, look at these siblings getting along, but no, they faked being real estate agents, held fake open houses for listings that were not real, but, but they did accept real offers and 100% real deposits, a bunch of them for the same house. Essentially, a bunch of buyers sent real deposits for fake listings to fake escrow accounts organized by fake agents. During a period of three years, they scammed a bunch of buyers in Los Angeles of an estimated $6 million, holy moly. So the big question is, how can we prevent this from happening or at least dramatically reduce the likelihood of this happening to us? One, verify the real estate agent. Get the name and license number of the person you talk to. If you can find a picture that matches them, great. Although, although I must say this can be tricky as agents are famous for marketing their high school picture of like 30 years ago. But anyway, check their license status on the California Department of Real Estate website where, where you can see if they're active, how long they've been licensed, and if they have any disciplinary actions against them. And I'll put a link to the Department of Real Estate website in the description below. To verify the escrow company, this is the company where you're going to send your, your deposit and down payment. Don't send it to the seller, don't give it to your agent, don't give it to your dog. Although actually it's probably safer with your dog. This money should only go to the escrow company. If anyone gives you any excuse for doing otherwise, scream, scam, please help, scam. Just kidding, don't scream. But anyway, in verifying the escrow company, one, don't underestimate the power of Google. Two, once your offer is accepted and before you send any money, ask the escrow company to provide one, their license number, and two, what agency issued their license. An escrow company can get their license from three different agencies, the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation, the Department of Real Estate, and the Department of Insurance. So depending on who issued their license, that's where you would go to verify them. For example, the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation, you can go on their website, punch in the license number, and Voila, it tells you if they're licensed, how long they've been licensed, and if they have any public actions against them. And I'll put a link to the other agencies in the description below. And a great escrow company that I like working with, West Coast Escrow in Santa Monica, Jamie Lori, and I'll also put her information in the description below. And by the way, my name is Daniel Rangel, real estate agent in Los Angeles. If I can be of any help, it would be an honor. But more importantly, if you like this video, make sure to hit like or subscribe. Scam number two, wire fraud. So a professor at UC Berkeley ready to close on his house wired his down payment money, $921,235,000.10. Two days later, the escrow company calls and is like, hey buddy, so um, yeah, what's going on with the money? He's like, yeah, I send it over. I send it over to your Wells Fargo account. Closing company is like, um, we don't have a Wells Fargo account. Turns out a scammer intercepted the emails, inserted their own wire instructions, and the money ended up in China. Somehow scammers are able to see who's going through a real estate transaction, and then they essentially create these dummy or lookalike emails of the escrow agent and the other parties involved. So you think it's your agent or the escrow company writing to you, sending you wire instructions, but it's not, it's a scammer, and you're about to send them or deposit 921,235. Holy moly, that is a lot of money. But anyway, again, the big question, how can we prevent you from accidentally bankrolling some random dude's purchase of seven Lamborghinis? One, as soon as your offer is accepted, get the contact information of the escrow company, specifically their phone number, and, and cross check it with other sources like their website. Now, save this number as you're gonna need it later. 
Two, later when the escrow company emails you the wire instructions, cross check the phone number in the wire instructions with the one that you saved earlier. Don't, don't trust the phone number in the wire instructions. It could be a hacker and you're about to verify wiring instructions with the hacker, ensuring that they get your money. So call the escrow company and verify all the information in the wire instructions is correct, including, including the bank account number, routing number, escrow number, pretty much everything on that piece of paper. And again, don't text them, don't email them, call them like a real adult who existed before the iPhone. And even if it's one of those two-step verification accounts, those can be scams too. Call them with your camera. Yes, it also makes calls. And when the wire is sent, have them confirm that they got the money as soon as possible. And depending on what time you send it, the wire should arrive the same day or the next day. The thing is to stay on top of it. If it goes missing, you want to act immediately, reach out to your bank and get the FBI involved. That, that's what the Berkeley professor did, acted quickly, and I'm happy to say he was able to get his money back. Yeah. But unfortunately, a bunch of people never see their money again, ever. And wire fraud is one of the most common, if not the most common real estate scam in the US with thousands of people falling victim every year. And the numbers just keep getting bigger. So, so, cross check the information and make that call. Scam number three, big fat line seller. So in California, the seller has a legal obligation to disclose anything that they're aware of that could affect the value of the property or affect the buyer's decision to buy. Now, if they don't, well, they just committed fraud, but they're also not obligated to go out of their way to find issues or disclose anything that they're not aware of. And I would say most sellers are pretty honest for, for moral reasons or they just don't want to get sued. But some, but some, some will lie. During the pandemic, I represented a buyer on an investment property that was being sold with the tenant. The seller said and put it in writing that the tenant was up to date on the rent and that the tenant was just like the most amazing tenant in the world. Now, I was hoping to meet the tenant at the inspection, but he wasn't there. So before I left the house, I wrote a letter. Dear tenant, sorry about the inconvenience. Thank you for allowing us access to enter the property. Any issues, here's my information. Daniel Rangel, real estate agent for the buyer. Uh, hugs and kisses. And then, and then I prayed. I prayed that he would call me and he did. And it turns out he hadn't been paying rent for the past five months and had no plans of ever doing so. He literally said, I have no plans of ever doing so. I have pandemic protection. I will write this out as long as I can. So we immediately canceled the transaction and avoided a big fat financial mess. But this is just one example of how a dishonest seller can be disastrous and extremely expensive. So the big question is how, how can we protect ourselves from big fat lion sellers. One, don't trust them, but like nicely. Listen to them, but verify. Do your own investigation and be very vigilant during this period. It's okay to be cynical and negative. Ask questions, specific questions to the seller in writing, in email, and have them respond. Dear seller, can you confirm I'm reading this correctly? The tenant is paying rent right? Hire an inspector, hire a specialist, and recognize that the physical inspection part is only a small part of, of the things that can go wrong in a real estate transaction. There's the administrative side, review the title report, appraisal report, natural hazards report, permits. But really, really the point here is hire a good real estate agent. If you hire an agent because he told you he could find you a house, um, Zillow does that from like the comfort of your bed. One of the biggest values of a real estate agent is to guide you through the investigation process of the purchase and help you identify things that the seller might not disclose or even be aware of. So if you ever wondered, do I need a buyer's agent? Um, yes. And another messed up part about my story is I'm pretty sure the seller's agent also knew the tenant was not paying rent. That's so messed up. But disclaimer, a real estate agent is not an attorney, nor an inspector, nor a contractor, nor a specialist in many matters relating to real estate, and the buyer should do their own investigation and seek the advice of an appropriate specialist. But yes, hire a good real estate agent.
And on a related topic that, that may be helpful, check out my other video on things to look out for when previewing a house for sale in Los Angeles, and I'll put a link in the description below and at the end of this video. But anyway, my name is Daniel Rango, real estate agent in Los Angeles. If I can be of any help, it would be an honor. But more importantly, if you like this video, make sure to hit like or subscribe to get more Los Angeles real estate related videos. But either way, thanks a bunch for watching and have an awesome day.